What is going on guys? Jack here and welcome back to episode 7 of our Motorsport Manager Let's Play and well, we're back. I'm going to apologise first and foremost because it's been two weeks since the last episode. There is a few reasons for that. Obviously this is coming out on a Tuesday. This series doesn't come out on Tuesdays. Why is it coming out on a Tuesday? Why is it not come out in the last two weeks? Well, as I said, I, I apologise. Um, I don't really have an excuse for the last few weeks other than the fact I've been a little bit busy. And I sat down to record a video this weekend and, uh, well, my SSD failed uh, on my PC. So for the last few days, and well, you might have noticed a general lack of videos, I've essentially been scrambling together to rebuild my PC, build a new, well, build a new and get in a new SSD and recover as many files as I could. Now, fortunately, all the videos for all my various series, they're all safe, all the saves are safe. Obviously, important reminder now, and I'll do this as a public service announcement, back up your files, it will save you uh, a hell of a lot. Um, but no, I am pleased to say we are back now, and this is going to be weekly, I'm going to make it weekly, and if I don't, you can come and find me. We're back, Jolian Palmer, He's the. I'm going to use him as a scapegoat, it's the fact that I have to stare at his disappointing little face every episode, but... Of course, at the end of last episode, we had a bit of a dilemma. We looked at two potential drivers, Hashimoto and Carlos Sainz Jr. Now, I've made up a general kind of decision in my head as to what I'm going to be doing with these drivers, which we'll, we'll reveal it later on, hopefully, if the correct drivers kind of accept our various terms. Just in a little bit of news, you can see I have got a new gearbox being worked away. If we just look at our parts as a little bit of a recap here, because obviously it has been a little while since the last episode, you can see we've got lots of general improvements coming through. The new gearbox is going to be very welcomed. And uh, yeah, hopefully we can get, kind of continue to push and improve this car. Although, um, I don't know, the improvements that are kind of available for us are a little bit limited for us really in this, our first season. Anyway, you can see the Vancouver Grand Prix is coming up. But before we get into that, we have a vote that's begun, and it's going to be about using Brutus tyres. So you can see here, Brutus produced performance-focused tyres, allowing slightly more speed around the track. These tyres aren't quite as durable as Cortez tyres. So apparently we will. this will benefit cars who struggle with tyre uh, wear. That includes us, and it will not benefit cars which are easy on their tyres. I kind of feel like I should vote for here, but this rule's going to come in next season, and... I want to squirrel away a lot of money this year to try and invest in a really nice chassis for our car as a good base that won't have tyre degradation problems. So, because I feel like tyre wear might not be a problem next year, I'm actually going to abstain from voting, which gives us another vote next year. So, that's kind of the logic I'm going with there. We'll see how this vote pans out. You can see lots of votes against, lots of votes for as well. The decided decision here, voting against though. If I voted for it... Well, it might have made a difference. It probably wouldn't have done. Well, it would have done. And there's no, it might have not have done. It would have done. Unfortunately, you can see here the GMA president, Chase Carey, he had the he had the big decision at the end of the day, and he said, "Look, we're we're not going to change the tyres, so it's not happening." Anyway, as you can see here, uh, Vancouver's coming up. The weather forecast: rain for practice, cloudy for qualifying, rain for a race. I love a wet race. I actually think that suits our car quite a lot. So we'll have to see how we get on here. You can see we've got all our different kind of bonuses. I'm going to go for the big Brucey bonus of coming sick for above. I do think that's possible. We also get to choose our tyre selections here, of course. Um, this could be a little bit interesting. It's looking like it's going to be a dry qualifying, but with a very wet race, I don't think there's going to be much need for the harder compounds of tyres. So I'm really tempted here just to stack up on lots of ultra soft. So that's what we're going to go with. In terms of parts, I don't think we have any new parts that we're going to fit. Of course, we're not risking it with the risky engine anymore. We do have a new gearbox, but with the reliability at 50% at the moment, I'm not going to chance that just because the gearbox is one of the kind of performance pieces that takes the longest to replace in terms of parts in Motorsport Manager. If you need to fix it up, you're going to lose a lot of crucial time. So that's what we're going to go with here. Let's get into this Vancouver race. I will stress now, it's been a few weeks since I've played Motorsport Manager, so I'm hoping for a good practice session. Of course, as we've done over the last few episodes, I'm going to skip forward towards the end of practice. We're going to see kind of how our strategy is coming together, how the setup is going. And, uh, well, hopefully we can hit the ground running uh, in this our return to Motorsport Manager. Have a good practice. Hopefully develop quite a lot of knowledge of the wet tyre. That is actually my focus because with it being stormy and wet and rainy, I don't even think it's going to be an intermediate race. You can see predicted sun for practice. That's going to be a lie because the long-term prediction is for rain. But it might give us a short while, I guess, to do a few very brief laps 
um, on the kind of slightly more generous tyres. But anyway, let's quickly just configure our car here. I'm kind of trying to find a middle ground between everything. Hopefully, we can just hit the perfect setup off the bat. So that's got to be the aim. Um, for a little bit of, I guess, tips and stuff for people who, uh, you know, maybe picking up Motorsport Manager, not really necessarily knowing what they're doing, I always kind of like to try and kind of cross-reference, I guess, what our drivers want. And you can see here, for the most part, it's quite different, the kind of driver setups. The downforce, I guess, is marginal. Handling's fairly similar, but we're going to go with top speed on Palmer and uh, acceleration on Hulkenberg. And based off that kind of feedback, we can hopefully change things up. But anyway, that's the setup I'm going to go with for the first practice lap. I'll join you guys towards the end of the session. I'm going to get my umbrella ready because I think it's going to get wet. And, uh, well, guys, don't go anywhere. Let's see how we get on. Okay guys, so you join me here towards the end of qualifying. You can see just two minutes left on the clock. Uh, I've sent Jolien Palmer just out on a one out lap to try and get a little bit more knowledge in the race trim. As you can see, we managed to max out knowledge on the intermediate tyres as well as the qualifying trim. We've got some okay ultra soft knowledge that might come in useful if qualifying is going to be dry. Um, but yeah, I feel like the main priority was to make sure that we are ready and kind of raring to go for if we do get a wet race. It is worth noting I've not sent either of my drivers out on the full wet tyres because as you can see looking at the water on track, it's not really gone above 50% kind of wetness. And as a result, it kind of felt a bit silly uh, to try and send these guys out and uh, well try and make something happen on the wet tyre in terms of building up some knowledge. But it's been an okay qualifying session. You can see here, we actually finished fourth and fifth in terms of times. That due to, of course, the fact that I did manage to get that early kind of set of kind of qualifying kind of laps done on the ultra soft tyre. So that's helped massively. And well, hopefully going into qualifying, we can reap the benefits of that, I guess. It's going to be interesting to see how things do pan out here at, well, Vancouver. Um, the track, you know, if it's going to be wet for race day, I think that does benefit us, as I said, said earlier. Um, there's going to be some questions, I think, in qualifying here in terms of it's going to be a dry qualifying. Can we try and get through to Q3? That's going to be a big challenge, I think, for us. But it's a challenge that we've got to try and do here, and we're going to go with the ultra soft tyres and the qualifying trim, of course, for this qualifying session. In terms of the car setups, you can see here, pretty good all round. Nico Hulkenberg set up at a 97 optimal balance. And uh, you can see here, Palmer's at 96% as well. So I don't think we're going to get much better than that. Um, I don't know if you can get 100% on the balance. I've only ever got 99%. I feel like that might be where it's capped off. If it's not, and you've managed to do it, like you're better than me at this game. Congratulations. Uh, please show me some evidence of it. I don't. I, is it possible? Answers on a postcard. Let me know. Anyway, qualifying here. We already know that the track on grip doesn't actually affect the game unless that was implemented in a recent update that came out. Because there was an update for this game. I didn't look into the patch notes. Maybe I should have done. Maybe I'm going to regret the fact I didn't, but well, I'm going to send our drivers out here um, and we're going to just try and get some early kind of times in without being held up, of course. So I'm going to turn the tyre kind of and brake temperature things onto auto. I had someone ask me this in the comments, you know, like, why do you have them on auto? It, it's, I feel like it's a realism thing. I feel like if I was a f kind of motorsport team manager, I'm not going to be in the radio with both my drivers si simultaneously telling them where to speed up and slow down on their outlap. So it's not really a thing that you do. So as a result, it's not something I'm going to do. I'm going to put faith in my drivers here as they do go on to their flying laps. I mean, we're guaranteed to be top of the pile, albeit because we're going to be the first teams to finish laps. But let's see how we get on here. You can see Hulkenberg's got a little bit of time ahead of him and a little bit of space ahead of him, as has Palmer. So our drivers have come out in fairly beneficial spots here. And uh, yeah, well, we'll see how we get on. Can we set some good opening times? You can see... We've gone fastest. Oh, wait, no, we haven't. Hamilton literally went faster than us. Well, that's just a little bit embarrassing, isn't it? But Hulkenberg a second behind Palmer. A second and a half behind. That is a pretty big gap, but perhaps that's a little bit of an indication as to just how good the, the Mercedes car is this year. It's a very, very fast car indeed. We're going to struggle to keep up with it. Of course, the main aim here is just to try and get both drivers through to Q2. That's what our initial kind of aim here is. You can see that it seems like qualifying is going to remain dry. I could send our drivers out again. I'm going to send out Palmer again. I'm not going to send out Nico again. I think his time should be good enough. You can see we have got plenty of the ultra soft tyres. I guess I've not really got a lot to lose in sending Nico Hulkenberg out again. 
And because of that, part of me is tempted to just kind of send him out. Let's just get a time on the board once more. Let's see if we can improve a little bit. I feel like maybe that's the best way to play this. Tyres as a whole really isn't a problem for us this year. Um, you know, we're very rarely making it through to Q3. And so just having, you know, plenty of ultra soft tyres is just kind of it's something that's going to be fairly normal, I guess, for us. Anyway, we're going to get some time set here. You can see time is still kind of very much of the essence. And there are going to be teams, I imagine, filtering out here to try and better their times. Looking at the teams down there, you can see Sainz Jr., a driver who, of course, we've offered a contract to. He's down there. He's going to be trying to outperform Palmer in the, the Toro Rosso. Elsewhere, perhaps not too many surprises. Grosjean, I guess, has eked out fairly good performances with the Haas in real life. Whether or not he can match that here, I'm not sure. You can see Magnussen, his teammate, is also struggling. And, uh, well, a minute left on the clock here. You can see Hulkenberg, I don't think he improved his time. And I don't think Palmer improved his time either. So that's a little bit disappointing. In fact, you can see here, Palmer's last lap was actually three tenths slower than his previous lap. So a less than ideal performance by him. But, uh, well, only Sainz Jr. and Magnussen could leapfrog Palmer here. And it's not going to happen. We are going to see both of our drivers go through to Q2, which is good. In some ways, Q2 is where we want to be because it gives us free choice of tyres. Obviously going into the race, assuming that we don't get a wet start. If the race does have a wet start, um, that does mean obviously that cars don't have to use the same kind of dry compound they used to qualify on. So that might benefit them. Of course, we know there's storms on the horizon. At least if the weatherman who gave me the forecast on Friday is correct. So that's what we're going to be looking towards. You can see Vettel and Hamilton separated by... Oh, well, you can see here, 59 thousandths of a second. Bottas as well, three thousandths of a second behind Hamilton. A really tightly fought kind of battle going on at the top. Meanwhile, you know, we quite leisurely, I guess, qualify for the second qualifying session relatively comfortably. You know, the teams that we finished ahead of, I guess they're the teams you'd expect us to finish ahead of, really. But, uh, well, if we want to match that sponsor objective of top six, we've got a bit of a task at hand. You can see here... It's going to be wet for qualifying. This was not predicted. This was not anticipated. I am tempted to send our drivers out here on the inters, although we, we are lacking inter tyres. There is a chance that the track is going to get dry as this goes on. And because during qualifying for both of our drivers, if I just show you the tyres, we used two, two of our five sets of inters. I don't really want to use a set of in qualifying if we can avoid it and if it is going to get dry which it looks like it may well do it's a case of will it, is it going to stay dry so a lap on this track is about a minute and a half if we send our drivers out about and about another kind of half a bar on that um graph they're going to be coming out when the track is dry and if it's going to be a limited dry spell this could be a really good chance for us to capitalize so everyone else has gone out on the wet or the inter compound we're going to go out on the ultra softs and we're going to try and squeeze in a time in this kind of window of opportunity which is going to emerge. Although, if it stays dry, I guess this window is going to be wide open for other teams to leap through and try and make something happen. But, well, it's important, I guess, that we just set a time as best we can. You can see Hamilton doing very, very well on the Inters. Interesting to note that Mercedes actually sent Bottas out on the wet tyres. You know, part of me wonders, would, you, would they recall him in here in real life? You know, would you just pull him in and go, look, the, the lap is not going to work out for us here on the wet tyres. That's what that's what I feel like they would do. I don't feel like the AI of Motorsport Manager is quite that sophisticated yet. You can see Hulkenberg set a fastest Sector 1 of the uh, the qualifying session thus far, massively benefiting, I guess, from uh, the dry weather. You can see we are still the only cars to be out on this kind of drier compound. There's only five minutes left as well. Some teams are going to be cutting this fine. Hulkenberg and Palmer go top two. The tactic seems to have worked for us, but it is worth noting t t teams are going to have plenty of time to strap on a set of the dry compounds and try and make something happen. As a result, there is certainly part of me that is tempted to um, try and make something happen. You can see there is rain coming at the end of the session, and if it comes at the right time for us and if it's heavy enough, this is going to benefit us because you can see Perez and Ericsson, the first two teams out on the outlaps, but the rain's coming. I'm not sending out my drivers again. I don't want to waste any more tyres. I need to hope that that rain is enough and that that's going to hit teams at just the wrong moment. Because you can see, it's going to get dry very soon after. I, I still could send my drivers out on the dry tyres if I wanted to. Do I want to? That's the question. I guess I, I can afford to. Let's go for it. Let's just let's try and set another time. It, it, the rain might hamper 
other teams here because you can see as teams start their flying laps as they are now, um, they're actually corresponding perfectly with the track now, which is at its wettest. So a lot of the cars here are going to be suffering because of this wet weather, and this could be massively, massively beneficial to us. Although, I mean, as fast as it got wet, it dries up again. This is going to be interesting for us. You can see Raikkonen, fastest sector one, slower in sector two, but... Well, if we can make both drivers get through to the final session, it's going to be great for us. But I expect to see us tumble here. You can see Perez, Raikkonen, Ocon and Ericsson unable to best us because of that rain. That has helped us massively. You can see Hamilton and Bottas going to go one and two. I mean, shock here, I guess, with Alonso in 15th. Stroll also really struggling. It's going to be disappointing for McLaren, the fact that both their drivers have crashed out there. Elsewhere, not a load of shocks, really. I guess the big shock is the fact that we have got... Third and fifth at the moment, and we've capitalised on the rain. And well, for the first time in a little while, we have two drivers through to the final qualifying session, albeit thanks to a little bit of good fortune with the weather. And well, if we can have some rain now in Q3, that'd be very nice. And the rain is here. Is it here to stay though? Again, I'm going to be trying to aim to find a dry spell in this session because I don't have into tyres to waste. So we're going to sit tight and hope that it gets dry. I don't want to send out my drivers here on the Inters just to set a time for the sake of it. Ultimately, the fact that we've got through to this session is fantastic news, but we are going to have to use whichever tyre we kind of finish up on here. And you can see the, tray, uh, the track is gradually, gradually drying out. I guess the question is, is it going to dry out enough or is the rain going to continue to come down here? You can see it's set to continue to rain. But it is going to dry up. And actually looking at the next two kind of bars of weather. Lack of rain there. That could be the optimal window of opportunity. That's going to be around, I don't know, six seconds in. I feel like when the bar, when the, the red cursor gets halfway through the next bar, that is kind of the, the signal to go, go, go. And try and make something happen here. So let's see what we can do. We're going to go out on the, the, the kind of the, the ultra softs once more here. Try and make something happen. Obviously, everyone else desperately kind of clambering to set a time on the Inters. We're going to try and capitalise on that. Obviously, key here that our drivers don't go off um, on the, the, the kind of outlaps here where it's slightly wet. I've just noticed that this turned off between sessions. If that was off last session and we got kind of third and fifth, that's an incredible achievement. I think we did as well. So that is partially my kind of lack of foresight there. I have to hold up my hands and apologise to the drivers. But we made it work. I mean, the strategy as a whole, kind of going out when we did, has certainly benefited us. You can see everyone else on in-laps having set times on the inters. Whilst the track is, well, it, it's bone dry and we're going to try and make something happen here. I really want rain to start coming again now to impact teams who now are going to probably try and set another time. Can we get some more rain game? Can you? It's not going to happen, is it? It's going to dry up here. Unfortunately, I don't think we're going to have lightning strike twice, so to say. And I feel like the little bit of fortune that perhaps we got... Last time out isn't going to benefit us. It's worth noting, though, all those cars still in the pits might not get round the track twice, and there is rain coming at the end of the session. Maybe lightning is going to strike twice. Maybe Nico Hulkenberg could get pole here. You can see Hamilton's going to be on his outlap. We might as well follow him because both our drivers are going to be coming in. So he's on his outlap now. A lap time here is about a minute and a half. There is rain coming. I think it's going to come a little bit late and Hamilton's perhaps going to get his lap time in. But, well, I don't know. Maybe maybe I'm speaking too soon here. He's about halfway through the lap as the rain is going to come and take hold. And, well, hopefully it can benefit us. Hopefully it can see Hulkenberg get first on the grid here. Struggle in the rain. Come on. You can see fastest in the first two sectors. Where's he going to go? He is going to leapfrog Hulkenberg by a massive margin. The rain... It didn't quite come down hard enough for us. You can see Hulkenberg in fourth, Palmer in sixth, Vettel and Verstappen trying to leapfrog here. Neither of them is going to do so. I mean, fourth and sixth on the grid is not too bad. We achieve our sponsor objective, unusually for us, a nice long opening qualifying session. That's not something that we've experienced um, all that much of, um, I guess, during our time here at Force India. But... Uh, not Force India, uh, Renault. Why am I thinking we're at Force India? It's because I've been playing my F1 2016 uh, kind of ch career mode and <laughs> I'm, I'm Force India in that. But no, fourth and sixth, we will very much take them with a wet race. We could be in a good little spot here to do well. I'm, I'm delighted with how well we've done. As you can see here, the race is going to start dry. Now, this is interesting for us. You can see we're locked onto... Oh, in fact, no, we're not locked onto the compound because of the weather. 
Now the question is, okay, you can see rain is going to come in immediately. It's a case of how long is that rain going to last? And I don't have good forecasting. Do I start on the full wet tyres to avoid an early pit stop, or do I anticipate that rain to stop? Do I trust the weatherman? That's the question. Do I trust the weatherman? We can change tyres because of the forecast. I'm, I'm really tempted to start on full wets, which might screw us over early on. It's a case of how long is that rain going to last? And will the wet tyres hold up if we're using them on a dry track? I mean, do I try and just get in one or two? I mean, I might get in a lap and a half before it starts chucking it down. I guess the dilemma is if I start on the dry tyres, I'm going to have to switch after a lap, realistically, or we're going to start losing time. But I feel like the right option here is to pl play with the inter uh, sorry, with the wet tyres. I'm going to go with inter knowledge, obviously. That makes a little bit more sense than using the dry tyres because I'm hoping that eventually the track will kind of semi-dry out and that will benefit us. Obviously, drivers are pretty confident. This is what we're going to go with. Uh, I'm going to ask the drivers right at the start of the race to really kind of try and attack. Although attacking could hinder our tyres massively. Okay, I've selected tyres which don't suit the cover current weather conditions. Do I want to continue? I do want to continue. I'm going to change the driving style down to neutral because obviously our tyres are going to wear down very quickly on the, the dry track. You can see Hamilton's starting on wets. Bottas starting on the dry. So this is a really interesting kind of situation. There is going to be a big split here. Between these cars that are starting on the drier compounds and those who are going with us on the wets. Interestingly, I don't think anyone is on intermediates. So I guess these guys starting on the dry tyres are hoping to have like a, a you know a good kind of few laps, making the most, I guess, of the fact the track's gonna be dry and some of the cars ahead are gonna be on the, the drier compound. But well, we'll see how we get on here. Hulkenberg, not the best start for him. He is immediately overtaken by Ricardo. Does have that inside line, so we'll hold on to it. But you can see two of our drivers drastically dropping down. Ricardo, obviously on those ultra softs, Bottas as well. You'd expect them to be performing well here. Palmer up to sick. Fair play to him. Hulkenberg in seventh. I mean, we want the rain to come. We want it to rain on us today. Rain on our parade, please. Obviously, it's a big disadvantage. But all these cars who are using the drier compounds, they are going to have to come in, if not on this lap, next lap. But they're going to have to do a lot of the lap whilst kind of driving in the rain which could be very interesting indeed i'm gonna to have to turn down the driving modes here early on no heat in our tires which is a little bit of a concern let's let's try and push um our tires just to get the heat up and actually you can see a lot of cars pitting on that first lap very interesting indeed hulkenberg down in 12th hulkenberg not happy with the tires you've got to trust me here although looking at it it might quickly drop dry and go on to inters or even completely dries, depending on how this pans out. Which would be a very interesting race. The weather here in Canada has been crazy, to put it lightly. It's been mad. You can see we're here on the wets. Lots of cars pitted and went on to inters. They changed their strategies very early on. I didn't even pick up on the fact that those cars coming in we're switching to inters you see our wet tires have degraded very very quickly on the dry track but i'm hoping they can last until lap four and uh well that will give us uh time to either switch onto the inters or switch onto the dries depending on what the weather forecast is like for us we should see ourselves benefiting from this wet track whether or not that is going to be the case i guess remains to be seen here but we're probably going to get a lap and a half on this. I think we've got the strategy wrong. I mean, it's easy to say in hindsight, and with a better forecasting sense, maybe this wouldn't be a problem. be interesting to see these cars on the drier tyres. Are they going to pit here? I mean, some of them might have earned an opportunity to go into the pits. And you can see, actually, Bottas has elected to pit. Ricardo is staying out on the ultrasofts. The strategies, they've gone out the window. Bottas has gone onto wet tyres. I really don't know what to think of this race right now. It, it's all over the place in terms of strategies. Loads of cars have now pitted. I mean, has anyone pitted twice after the, this shambles of a lap? You can see Hamilton going on to the ultra soft. So we are seeing cars pit twice in three laps as I guess their, their tacticians just panic to try and build some kind of strategy. You can see it's going to get drier. I'm going to go on the dry tyres. I'm going to pit here with both of our drivers. We're going to have to stack them. But I think it's time to get on the, the ultra softs and try and make this dry track work for us. I guess it's a question of... How long is it going to stay dry for? And in the case of Palmer with his terrible tyres, it actually might make more sense to go on super softs. So that's what we're going to go with. Hulkenberg could see out another lap on the wet, but he would be stuck out on a drying track, which I'm not really a fan of, if I'm being completely honest. So I think we're going to have to double stack our drivers here. 
Yeah, I mean, I could I could leave him out for one more lap, but the t he's going to get dry so quickly here. And I almost feel like it's worth just sticking on a set of ultra softs on both drivers and stacking them. It's not really the situation I want to be in, but I guess for the cars who are pitted twice, it, I mean, our situation could be a lot worse here. Yeah, a bit mad here. You can see Grosjean's pitted twice. He's on the wet tyres. He's going to pit again, surely, with the track drying up. It's going to be very interesting, this race, to see who has got the strategy right here because it it it's madness. It is strategy madness here at Vancouver. Nobody seems to know what the best way to approach this race is. I'm kind of panicking, if I'm being honest. I'm just kind of hitting random buttons and hoping it's going to work out for us. Bottas is in the lead, but he's on the wet tyres and he's not come in. Which is questionable with the track drying up now. I mean, this is... As far as races go, this has been a mad one. Because there's going to be Grosjean here, who surely is going to come into the pits. He's not. He's going to stay out on the wet tyres. And the track is getting dry. Now, this might work for Bottas. Because you can see, he's going to be coming... Kind of ending this lap and just switching on to dry tyres. So he has benefited massively, I guess, from the panic from the rest of the paddock. Few cars yet to pit. They've been on dry tyres for the entire race, and it's kind of worked for them. They've managed to, I guess, persevere with this wet weather, and they're probably going to benefit from the fact that we are now looking at a dry spell in the race. I guess one question that needs to be answered is how long is this dry spell going to last? You can see we're down in 12th and 14th. I mean, it's, it's hard to judge where that really is in terms of race terms because everyone's on different strategies. I feel like we're just going to have to see how kind of things pan out in the remainder of this. I mean, another a rain shower could really kind of throw the cat amongst the pigeons here. It could change everything once more. I mean, I'd love to know down in the comments, you know, let me know, put your answer on a postcard. What would you have done? I mean, it's easy in hindsight, I guess, now, now that we know how this weather panned out. But how would you ever approach this situation? Because honestly, I've played a fair bit of motorsport manager. I've not seen anything like this. You can see there's a lot of cars ahead of us here. They're all going to be pitting in the next few laps with their tyres degrading. I actually think our strategy might work okay here. It'll be interesting to see where we end up. And you can see, actually, 8th and 9th at the moment is not too bad at all for Hulkenberg, although it's now 9th and 10th. A little bit more disappointing, I guess. Tyre temperatures are starting to rise up. Palmer's tyres actually went quicker than Hulkenberg's, despite the fact that Hulkenberg is on the softer compound. I mean, the dilemma I've got here is that Palmer, I mean, if if I see rain, I've got to pit Palmer, get him on the ultra soft for a really short stint, and then get him on the wets for the rest of the race. But at least at the moment, it looks to be staying dry, which I can't really work out if that benefits us or not, not because we've probably got two more laps for each of our drivers here that they can last on these tyres. I mean, some rain here would actually help us massively in terms of the strategy. I don't think it's going to come, but we can dream, we can hope. I guess the risk here is that if the rain comes in a few more laps time, um, we're going to be switching on to dry compounds because our tyres are just going to fall off a cliff. And, uh, well, we're going to have to then switch immediately once more onto the to the you know the, uh, the wet tyres. But at least at the moment, it's staying dry. As a result, I'm actually going to pit Palmer here. There's nine laps remaining. These tyres last not that long what's his tire wear out actually he can last he can last one more lap probably i i like to use 20 percent as kind of my borderline you can see hulkenberg actually really struggling on the ultra softs grosjean three pit stops he's still ahead of hulkenberg he was on those ultra softs you would have thought they might have worked today but it doesn't seem to have been the case here unfortunately we may well have to double stack our drivers again here which is not really the situation i want to be in but it's still dry and uh for that reason and that reason only um, I mean, do I do I keep Palmer out here and selfishly pit Hulkenberg, knowing that he has the best chance of points realistically? Is that an unpopular thing to do? I think I've just missed the window of Hulkenberg as well. If I if I hit pit too late here, which I, I'm ninety percent sure I have, I've just screwed this up massively, massively. How? What's the percentage on the current tyres? They're kind of. I think I've just balls this. I think I've just ruined my own race. I have. That is frustrating. That's the disadvantage we're playing on kind of medium speed is I've missed the pit window. Oh, dear. I'm an idiot. I'm a fool. What was I thinking? I mean, now it's going to start raining, isn't it? Make my day game. Come on. Just show me the rain now that's on the horizon. I mean, we've got to double stack them again, which I guess the advantage is that Hulkenberg's tyres are slightly worse than Palmer's. Um, so um, it does mean that... Um, 
he will be slowing down and increasing the gap that Palmer has on him. I mean, it's not been ideal. It doesn't look like there's going to be rain coming of any real significance before the end of the race, unfortunately. So it's going to be about trying to, I guess, make things work in in this stint. We'll see here. Palmer comes in for the pits. Don't hold up Hulkenberg. Let's make this a quick stop. We do make it a quick stop. That's very good for us. Unfortunately, a lot of cars look like they're going to make the one-stop strategy work. And I feel a little bit betrayed by the weatherman. Because he told me it was going to be thunderstorming on race day, and it thunderstormed for less than half a lap. Now, I don't I don't want to blame the weatherman for this, but can I, can I blame him? Am I allowed to? I mean, you'd think as an Englishman I'd be used to terrible weather forecasts, because it's what we're known for. But, um, well, I'm going to complain here about the weather forecast. We could still make up a few positions. If we could get one car into the top ten, I'd be pretty happy. Whether or not that's realistically possible, I guess, remains to be seen. You can see Palmer in 12th, Hulkenberg in 15th. I guess maybe it could still happen, although we have got to be a little bit careful here because our car kind of tyres are going to be running very much on the on the kind of the border in terms of their wear. Perez setting the fastest lap of the, the race, which is a little bit interesting. But um, no, we're going to put our car tyres on conserve. We do need to make these last. You can see Grosjean and Magnussen, both Haas cars, I think they're going to struggle to maintain their tyres here. Ericsson might also have problems, as may Stroll. We might we might benefit yet from these cars going on the two-stop strategies, but we need to conserve our own tyres as well. That's got to be a, a key kind of aim here. You can see four laps left of the race. We're pretty much five laps left because you can see here Bottas. He's almost lapping us. He's had a very good race in terms of strategy, although he might need to pit once more. And I don't know, maybe Ricardo's going to be looking to capitalise on that. Anyway, you can see the here. Tyre temperature's pretty good. We're going to just set our drivers to just push their tyres a little bit. Uh, sorry, that push the engines a little bit more. Just try and eke out some more pace. But yeah, there's going to be a few cars ahead of us who I think are going to have to pit. I feel like both Hasses are going to have to pit. I'm looking at Stroll. He might struggle. Van Dorn should be okay, maybe. Ericsson's going to pit. We are going to gain a few positions here. Points, definitely possible here. You can see the pack as a whole is very, very tightly matched. All the way from kind of Van Dorn in third all the way to really Hulkenberg, I guess. Separated by 25 seconds, that is nothing in race terms. You know, one crash, a safety car, uh, I don't know, a little bit of sprinkling of rain at the end, it's not going to happen. And uh, this whole race could change. You can see Bottas has made a third stop now. He's in very, very good hands in terms of his overall kind of race position here. I'm going to just set our drivers to push their tyres. We've only got three laps left. They should be okay now to push their tyres for the remainder of it. You can see Palmer is up into 11th. I feel like Magnussen and Stroll probably have to pit either that or well, their tyres are going to fall off a cliff. You can see Hulkenberg, he's doing fairly well. He's catching up with actually Sebastian Vettel. So we talk about ourselves struggling with our race. Ferrari, they've got to be kicking themselves today. Raikkonen as well, down in 17th. And Hamilton down in 18th. I mean, a lot of teams got the strategy wrong. And well, considering that we were one of those teams, very much like a few of these teams who are down here, who started on the wet tyres. You'd have to say the fact that we've managed to make up some positions and actually currently hold a spot in the points is actually quite a good achievement here. But yeah, not, not a lot of time, lap, uh, time left. We've got about a lap and a half to try and make something happen. Palmer is actually right on the tail of Ocon, who's on the slightly harder compound, the soft tyre, rather than the so super soft. So there might be an overtake on the cards, maybe, although... Tire wear could become a problem here because you can see the temperature is shot right up and I should be managing our tyres a little bit better than I have been here. Palmer, you know, Vettel's going to be trying to attack him. Can Palmer hold on for what could be some crucial points? Can Hulkenberg make something happen as well? Hulkenberg going to be trying to make the move on Vettel maybe down this straight. Not quite going to make it happen, although he is going to try and make it happen. Side by side racing here. Nico Hulkenberg, obviously a less powerful car than our Ferrari counterparts. And, uh, well, it, it doesn't look like he's going to quite make it happen. His tyre's now falling off the cliff. And, in fact, they've fallen right off the cliff there. He's lost a few spots. Palmer does hold on to ninth. Hulkenberg wasn't in the point, so I'm not as disappointed as I would be about the fact his tyre's kind of completely screwed up. Hamilton out of fuel, down in 18th. So that is a big shot there. Raikkonen struggling. Vettel scraped points in the end. Grosjean, who was going very well at one point, four stops in the end for that race. I mean, I don't know what to tell you about that Grand Prix as a whole. That was absolutely madness. But maybe with a better forecasting centre, I'd change my strategy. I mean, the fact that Bottas has won using a three-stop strategy of ultra-softs, wet, soft, ultra-softs, and then no one else matched that strategy perhaps indicates that that was the best strat. 
I mean, you can see here why um, the likes of Raikkonen and Hamilton struggled. They pitted twice in the first two laps, and then by the seventh lap, they p pitted three times each, and it was kind of not great for them from there onwards. I feel like our free-stop strategy kind of worked. You can see there's a few cars with free-stop strategies, um, or sorry, four-stop strategies, actually, that kind of squeezed in us, which is kind of interesting. Oh, sorry, no, our two-stop strategies. We used two stops, because obviously this is the tyre you start on, Jack. So, yeah, you can see here, two stops for us. Fair play to the cars he went with the one stops as well. You know, Ricardo, pretty bold decision, as was Bottas, I guess, really, considering that Hamilton, alongside him on the grid, obviously of the same team for Mercedes, started on the wet. I mean, I said halfway through the race, what would you have done? Please let me know. I, I, That was a really weird race. I feel like we were very fortunate in qualifying. It very much played into our hands. And I feel like it'd be a fair assessment to say that that race played anything but into our hands. You can see Hulkenberg tumbling down the, the Drivers' Championship. Palmer scored a few points. We're in sixth, which is kind of where we expect to be in the Drivers' kind of championship. But of course, the race wasn't the only kind of big pressing matter today because we're looking at bringing in some new drivers, potentially. And that's what we're going to kind of cast our eye forward to now. Who is on the horizon? Who might want to join us? We made £1.9 million, which is nice. Obviously, we might have a bit of compensation to pay depending on what new drivers we have kind of joining us and coming our way. But all in all, not a bad race. Of course, if we just have a, a little bit of a look for our season um, so far, where do we want to go here? We want to go to the calendar. Um, you can see, obviously, uh, previously at Cape Town. We did okay at Cape Town, did we not? I'm trying to remember now. Oh, no, we finished outside the points twice there of 11th and 13th. The race before that... We finished with Hulkenberg in 5th and Palmer in 8th. And, well, Russia just casting our eyes back a little bit further. Of course, we got 5th and 7th. That was a very good race for us. A little bit disappointing to only score the two points, but I guess points is better than nothing. And it's kind of as a few of our races have been really just a little bit average today. But anyway, let's see what we've got going on. We've got an interview here. What's the interview about? Hulkenberg claimed that the brakes are holding back the team. He needs to button it. Shut your mouth, son. Finish the interview. That's why he's loving the racing. You know, he's given up on football. So we have two contract proposals that are coming in the next day. You can see Haas, they've got their forecasting centre sorted. They probably wish that they had theirs sorted. Have we got a forecasting centre being upgraded? I feel like that's something I want to look to upgrade off the back of that last race. Um, in fact, do we have to build it as a new building? Yeah, six million. It's probably worth the investment, but until we sort out the driver contracts, I might kind of hold back on that that might be some something we do over kind of the off season particularly if we are looking to invest big in our car okay so neither driver's happy with the negotiations at the moment Hashimoto wants more wages I can't really afford to give her that much more in terms of wages I can increase her signing on fee she'd rather have a shorter contract I want to offer a medium length contract Carlos signs on the other hand he wants a short contract We'll give him a big in signing on, for, bigger signing on for you of 2.4 million. We'll bump up his wages as well. His current contract is 493,000. So we'll give him a wage rise. Hmm. I wonder if I can get him on a long contract. I'd ideally like to get Carlos Sainz on a long contract. Um, you see, Hashimoto is going to be replying as is Carlos Sainz. So we'll see what they respond to here. Okay. Uh, Hulkenberg, he wants to um, get the first lap hero trait. Or we can get the late breaker trait. What do we want? First lap hero or late breaker? What's Hulkenberg's kind of strengths and weaknesses? Is his breaking particularly bad? I'm trying to remember. He's breaking 16, so it could be better. First lap hero could be good. Hmm. His breaking's not terrible. I feel like we'll go with first lap hero. So we'll see how that benefits him. That does give him the new trait first lap hero, which if I remember correctly is quite a good trait actually. If we just look at Hulkenberg uh, on the driver's screen. Let's just have a look at what does that trait do? I'm trying to remember now. So first lap hero modifiers. So the first lap of the race, everything is plus four, which because of how good he is, for the most part actually sees every single one of his stats increase to 20. I feel like that's quite a good kind of trait to get rather than the late breaker one, just personally speaking. Is that the right decision? I have motorsport manager veterans who are probably sat now with their head in their hand thinking, Jack, what have you done? Was that, was that the right decision? Please let me know. Please reassure me that I made the right decision. 
So we have Hashimoto here, who's accepted our contract. Here's the thing. I mentioned at the start of the episode, I'd kind of made up a decision for what I wanted to do. And that was that I was going to drop Palmer and bring in Carlos Sainz. But part of me decided that Hashimoto wasn't the right driver to bring in. Because, yes, she has room to improve, but her smoothness is kind of the same problem that we have uh, with Palmer. And additionally, if we want to bring her in, her in as a backup driver, that, I mean, it's, it's a lot of money that we're going to be paying her for a backup driver. So, we're going to see if Carlos Sainz wants to join us. And if he does, we're going to try and bring him in. So let's have a look. Gearbox is finished. That's good news for that new gearbox. I mentioned that we built that just so you guys can see the, the kind of stats on that. It's a, a pretty meaty improvement, if I might say so myself. We can also maybe design a new part here. In fact, we can definitely design a new part. So we could build a new gearbox. The issue is it's going to be risk level. Although if I want to just look to improve the car for next year, which is kind of, the I feel like, the spot we're at... It might be worth just kind of investing big in the gearbox this year. So that's actually what I'm going to do. So I'm going to build this risky part. Then actually, I think then we can... I assume our facilities will... In fact, no, we don't have the telemetry sensor. I was going to say then our facilities will allow for us to build the Epic up unlocks. That's not going to be possible. The engine is kind of a similar problem here where we can only really build a risky engine. What about the brakes? Are our brakes any good? Uh, they're okay. I guess we can go with the, the deceleration plus build time and then plus 20 deceleration just to give us a little bit of improvement in the brakes. Oh, wait, no. They're the brakes we already have. So that's not an improvement there. I feel like we're at a point now where we're not actually able to improve our car by that much, which is perhaps a little bit of a concern. We don't have the new wind tunnel either, and none of these actually offer any real improvements. I mean, do we have anything that can improve our car? Medium spin corners plus 20. Again, risk level. I feel like, in all honesty, it's going to be a case of just building some risky parts at this point. So I guess we'll start off with the rear wing, which is something that isn't the greatest for us. And really, we're building all of this with next season in mind. But anyway, will Carlos Sainz sign? Will will he, will he sign? That's the question that everyone is now wondering. Oh, he wants the renegotiations. He is not happy with the wages. This is the last chance as well. I can't balls this up. Right, mate. I'm going to give you 650. Plus, I'm shortening the contract. How's that? I could give him a. I really want to sign him on a longer deal. How much more is 720,000 than what Palmer's on? Palmer's, Palmer's on 543,000. Now, for one of the best young drivers in Formula One. At least in this game. I think, despite his mistakes, he's a very good driver in real life as well, technically. It's probably worth going all out to try and get him on a long deal. Am I willing to give up £300,000 extra per race for signs? I am. I am willing to give it up. Now, you'll see here, the issue we've got is that the next race is sooner than when Sainz will get back to us on his contract. So, although I was hoping the whole saga of our drivers was going to end here, it's not. It's going to end next episode. Guys, I want to know, what would you do? You know, it's a slightly different situation now. Do we go Do we go with Sainz and hope that he accepts a contract? If he rejects it, do we then go and just get Hashimoto to replace Palmer? I mean, she wouldn't solve the problems that Palmer has, but she's a very good young driver has very good marketability as well, which is another reason to perhaps bring her in to really help us because our drivers, I mean, Jolien and Hulkenberg, both kind of iconic people in their own way, they're not super marketable. And, uh, well, we could certainly improve that, even bringing her in as a reserve driver, perhaps. Is is it worth paying, you know, that extra amount over what we are paying for Sorotkin, you know, 287000 Would it be worth bringing her in as the backup driver on 501,000 with that additional marketability, I genuinely don't know. I'd love to know what you guys think down in the comments. But anyway, as I said, this series is going to be coming your way weekly now. Hopefully you enjoyed today's episode. It was a slightly longer one to welcome us back to this series. And uh, yeah, if you've enjoyed, please do leave a like. I asked you guys various things to leave comments about. I expect to see hundreds of comments down below. And other than that, thank you so much for watching as always, guys. It is me, Jack, and I will talk to you guys in a bit. I'm out.